All right, hello, hello, guys. So in today's episode, I interview Helen, who previously worked through one of the Summit Strength programs in preparation for an end-to-end trip on the Bibulman track, which is a big trail over in Australia, which took her over three months to complete over a thousand kilometers of hiking. And inside this episode, she shares a little bit of an insight into her preparations and training, both on the physical and mental side leading into this big, big trip. She talks a little bit about her adventure and her time on the trail over those months of actual hiking and then she talks about some of the adjustments she's had to make after this adventure which is pretty typical things that a lot of people do struggle with after a really significant adventure like this so for anyone who's interested in preparing for a big hike a big through hike or a big you know multi-week adventure I think this episode is full of value full of insight and I really do think you're going to enjoy it so that's enough from me let's get into it. Okay, so welcome, welcome, Helen. Really, really excited to have you on the show. Welcome to the podcast. Um, Yeah, really excited to have you here. Thank you, Rowan. It's a real privilege to be on the show. My goodness. <laughs> oh, I am, I am, yeah, really, really stoked that you chose to come on board because kind of as we were saying before and um, we hopped on the show, like your sort of story and your journey that you've gone through, and I'm not going to, you know, get into it yet, but, um, you know, basically the journey you've gone through before during and after those big hike you've done recently i think it's going to resonate with so many hikers out there and i think this is going to be an absolutely awesome episode so really really excited to get into it um but before i get ahead of myself let's just start with the basics and start from scratch so if you just want to answer me the questions um you know where are you from um what do you do and and what is your is your background in hiking all right so i'm in perth in western australia and uh, what do I do? Uh, my husband and I have our own uh, small business uh, in property development. So we've been doing that for quite a while now. And this hike was actually our award to ourselves for having worked pretty intensively over the last you know, uh, six, seven years or so. And we have had a big holiday. So this, is, this was it. Yeah, so that was it. Uh, my background in hiking is... Um, I've always been a walker. I just haven't been able to stop walking. And uh, I think it's something I inherited from my dad. And um, I didn't actually get into hiking, hiking um, until my kids were in high school and the, they were taken on an overnight hike with uh, some, you know, one of the big companies in WA. And they learned a lot, came home, and then they taught us. So we were super excited to go out and try all the things that they've learned on you know, backpacks and and how to make instant pudding on the trail uh, when they were, you know, uh, 12 and 13 years old. So that's what we did. And we've got the photos still on our mantelpiece. Um, And we've all got the crap equipment and they've got their school bags on their backs and it's the crap sleeping mats and it's very, very primitive, but we got out there and we did it. So it was cool. Uh, how good how good oh, I love that and I love that it's like you know those things are such a such a special family memory of that, uh, that type of stuff and I think I've got something similar with my old man when when he sort of came on um, some of the overnight hikes we did as scouts and you know we got those pictures and yeah, it is a pretty special thing I love yeah. that love that so so tell us when we when we first started working together and when we first sort of you know we, we had a conversation about you know coming on board one of the summit strength programs um what specifically were you wanting to to train for uh well the actual hike itself yeah oh, okay yeah sure um i was planning on doing uh the biberman track end to end so that's from Kalamunda uh all the way through to albany in the southwest of wa and it's um 1005 kilometers long so that was um that was the hike that we we're aiming to complete and it was me and my husband uh, were doing it together, and I guess um, we'd, uh, you know, he's he's pretty busy, um, and it was my responsibility, being the planner of the household, to um, yeah, to plan it all, and including the training, and <laughs> so it was very overwhelming. And then um, I was doing some, uh, I guess, panic trolling around the internet, and came across you. Um, I think it was actually through the Bidman and Track Users face, um, Facebook group and um, someone on there mentioned that they'd had a great success with you and I looked you up and, yeah, I was super stoked, absolutely stoked to find your website and comprehensive information and 
I always just thought, my goodness, answer to my prayers. So, you know, because you've got all the information there on that is relevant to what I needed to know. Yeah, so that's me. Awesome, awesome. And and then so roughly how, how much time were you setting aside for this hike just so people can get a good perspective on, on that distance? How, how long were you sort of thinking this was going to take you? Sure. Uh, so we planned on 76 days. And so that is that was broken down into 56 days actual hiking and 20 days of rest um, in the track towns. And um, initially we weren't going to have that many uh, days uh, to have a rest, but I'd met another end-to-ender and um, he said, yeah, you need, you need that rest. So you need to have, you know, at least um, two full days per track town to you know, do your washing on one day and actually lie down and um, do some, you know, decent rolling out and easy legs back into it on the second day. And on the, on when we had, when I knew we were going to have really long session uh, sections that were going to be really hard, I planned for a third day of rest as well in those towns. So that was great. So, yeah, so 76 days total. And then aside from obviously getting ready for, you know, 76 days of, of being on trail or <laughs> give or take and, and getting ready for the demands of that, what, what were the other sort of challenges that you were facing that, that kind of made you, you know, want to come on board the training in the first place? Um, the challenges, my goodness. Um, I guess there was uh, oh, so many things. Um, I wanted a community around me. Um, of fellow hikers and uh, who were doing long distance specifically and uh, you know because it's it's a very different beast walking you know for so long uh, as opposed to you know walking for a week um, so yeah so and I'd done week-long hikes before and done all the prep for that but I just felt that you know basically two and a half months was pretty intense and it's just having a like-minded community around dehydration, uh, what kind of food to eat, getting that um, appropriate um, nutritional balance, um, how to plan your rest, how to, you know, do all that kind of stuff. And then the actual stress and strain on your bodies, which obviously needs a lot of preparation. So how do you hike? How do you prepare for that? So you're not, you're, you're, I guess you're reaching, hopefully getting close to your peak fitness when you start um so basically you you're in a good shape but you're not exhausted <laughs> I guess you know because you can overtrain as well the time you get on the track your body's just like blah, falling apart so <clears throat> I really just wanted um a, that that knowledge of a good balance um yeah I think that was where I was coming from and then um the some of the information specifically you have around ankles and knees uh was something that was really appealing as well so yeah Matt got in touch and then tell us a little bit about the training that you did do you know through summit strength like you know when you got your program and the stuff you went through like what what did that all look like for you sure well um i uh, unfortunately i didn't meet you until i got to the six weeks beforehand um, so I enrolled for a six weeks program. So um, I did everything very intensely in terms of I literally just crammed um, every video that you sent through, um, repeated every exercise. I had, you know, YouTube going while I was trying to cook dinner of information on how to look after your back and how to look after your knees and foam rolling and balls and everything else. So, um, and I must say that getting the ball in the mail was such a good thing. Um, I was very excited and it became my very best friend um, during training and actually on the hike as well. So, um, yeah, so then I started on the program and um, so I did a lot of squats and lunges, um, single deadlifts, upper body work as well um, and some core work. But I guess... And, um, for me, the, the bits that I, you know, some things you can go, I, I understand that um, in, in principle, but I guess the information that I got that was supplement to me 
um, and what it, um, was the ankle work and the footwork. So, you know, walking on your toes, walking on your heels to, to build up that, that strength. Um, some of the instability work. Um, yeah, because I remember you were talking about um, how if you trip over, you know, you needed to train your peripheral vision and your sense of balance. That was really extremely useful for me because um, I have to spend a lot of effort not tripping over on the track. So I incorporated some of those balance activities into my training uh, with your help. And uh, what else? Did I do? Oh, yeah. And the other thing was um, I guess the what I really appreciated was the slow breath count when you were doing moves. So either in your single deadlifts or doing squats, it wasn't about going like the clappers and, you know, getting into the point of, you know, not being able to walk. It was about learning how to breathe. So uh, learning how to breathe appropriately uh, with being calm and and getting through that those moves in a way that not only you, be, you built strength but you weren't stressed. Uh, and for me, that was a real um, eye opener as well. And I, I'm, I took a lot of that being calm uh, onto the trail. So, um, you know, things like when you're walking up a hill, you know, using your, using your heel uh, appropriately, making sure your breath is calm um, and, and slow. So I, I have never gotten up hills so easily in my life. And there's a lot of hills on the bib track uh, and uh, and it was they were just a breeze because I just kept that that the the training in mind and that your your repetition of use your heels use the heel walk and uh, push through the heels and that calm breathing my goodness you just cannot get stressed and not find yourself being able to go up a hill with that attitude it's great and and um and they're using the poles and learning how to walk using the poles. My back was straight. I was very comfortable. Um, yeah, it was, it was fantastic. Yeah, really appreciated it. Oh, it. no, and I did it. all the video calls in as well um, where I could uh, and just to build up that sense of community and extra knowledge. Um, did the nutrition video, took advantage of that and had the one-on-one with a nutritionist. So that program was um, excellent uh, because he got me to incorporate some of the dietary suggestions into my training. So I had a specific day where I thought about nutrition and um, that was revolutionary. Um, turned out that I'd been incorporating too many carbs into my diet and that was contributing to a, a really strong sense of fatigue. And um, so I cup um for me it was about adjusting my carb um, intake so that I wasn't getting tired and um, increasing my protein intake and um, being able to um, maximize my energy on the trail so yeah that was that was um really really good training yeah fantastic and even some of the stuff that I did on an, um, one of the earlier um, videos about wearing a backpack and at the time I was like yeah I know all that stuff whatever and then, or and then I got on the trail and I was like oh that's what he was talking about and it all went click 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 and made sense and um, so yeah that was a bit of a late revolution but in my mind but yeah it was yeah I really appreciated it. And then through the preparation and, and training process, yeah. you know, over those six weeks, were there any were there any particular roadblocks that came up along the way? And and if so, you know, how how did you go about overcoming them? Uh, roadblocks. Um, I think one of the big roadblocks that I that I had was mental, um, as absolute panic, sheer panic on my part about you know, um, have I got it right? Have I done it right? Um, and absolutely sheer terror of, you know, this day of walking walking out my front door with a full backpack um, was, was looming. And so um, I messaged you about that and uh, you recommended that I, I read a book called The Appalachian Trials 
and about that mental health strategy. So, um, so that looking after yourself mentally on the trail. And um, it was a very simple read, great story, um, very practical. And um, so I did the exercises that were involved um, in that book. Um, so it was very simple. You know, um, I guess the, one of the first things was to go, yeah, this is normal. Uh, everyone panics at some point and there is that overwhelming sense of terror. And, you know, why, why am I doing this? And it was the why that the author of the book um, really got into, you know, why are you doing this? And uh, so you write down your 20 reasons of why you're doing it and then you visualise how it's going to feel like at the end of the, of the journey and you write that down and, you know, uh, and then you're going to write down, you know, what am I going to tell myself on the trail <laughs> when, I want to, when I want to quit? And because there are days, obviously, when you just go, oh, really, it's just way too hard, way too wet, way too many snakes, way too, just way too hard. And um, and you can refer back to your why uh, at any stage. So I had my whys all written down in the notes on my phone because uh, I took my phone with me because obviously I'm using the camera. I didn't have reception much, but, um, yeah, I certainly used the camera and had access to my notes. So on those days um, that I was feeling low, um, I could look at my notes and go, yeah, that's this is me being really excited and this is why I'm doing my my walk and I, I'm not going to give up. So, yeah, it was that was, um, for me, that was a massive block. Yeah, for sure. And then let's, let's talk a little bit about how the trail went. So you went through your six weeks, you did your training, yeah. your prep, you worked through all those things, you stepped down the trail, pack on your back, talk us through it. How, how did it all go? Oh, it was epic. I was so excited. On, um, on the first day, um, my mother-in-law decided to drop off two kilos of food that we had extra that we had to carry. <laughs> so um, that was pretty interesting. So we were we were carrying a lot more on our first day, um, and so we were carrying eight days worth of food, and uh, so we were pretty well maxed out on our packs. And it was a very hilly section, and uh, I was super excited because um, got on the hills, started, and it, they're, they're pretty steep steps at that stage rather than a, a straight trail, and. Um, so I was able to use all my training and just powered up those hills. I was very excited, even despite the extra weight that I was carrying, of the unplanned weight. And um, my husband, who hadn't followed, um, I guess, the advice, um, was really struggling and he'd refused to get poles, hadn't done so much training, uh, et cetera. And in the end, I ended up having to give him my poles. <laughs> so that was our first two weeks of us arguing about poles on the track. And in the end, um, we had to message our daughter and just go, you know what, you've got, you need to get your dad some poles and he needs to do this properly because um, I knew the hills were going to get harder. Um, so, yeah, we had all our food drops organised. Um, so I think we were carrying eight days' worth of food for the first three sections and then after that we managed to get food drops every four days using some of the uh, trail companies along the way. So that was pretty cool. Um, super lucky. The um, We've had a very wet winter and there was a lot of wildflowers out. So everywhere we went, there was just, you know, amazing yellows and amazing oranges and reds and purples and, you know, just blanket of colour. So it was absolutely unbelievably beautiful the the track and then as we got um south of dwelling up um so that's uh, about um i mean how many, how many k's about 120 odd k's away from perth and um got further south from there and the hills got pretty intense at that stage and it was just relentless and um, extremely wet uh, so it was a lot of rain um, and then we were just up and down, up and down. So our legs certainly got very tired at that stage. And then um, then after we got from Collie um, onwards, 
um, the yeah the hills just kept on coming. Uh, we'd had a plan for a break day before some of the really bad sections, so that worked out really well as a strategy. And then um, again, because of the rain, we went six days uh, from Northcliffe to Warpole, um, wading through water, and it was just ridiculous I ended up with almost like a PTSD every time I came across a puddle because of this <laughs> this, this uh, water was just yeah six solid days of waiting and um, we we just had to plow through it I mean obviously you need to get to the, the hut so we managed to the huts were you know at least a couple hundred meters away from each nearest massive puddle and uh, swampy area so that was that was pretty intense. So yeah, and it was the we were pretty lucky. The water had started to drop, so like people who'd gone through previously, the water was up to their you know thigh upper upper thighs, and we were around our knees uh, and ankles. So depending on where we were, so that's pretty that was pretty cool. Got that over and done with, and then we we're along the coast um, for two solid sections, and it was just beautiful absolutely stunning we were really lucky the weather and yeah it was beautiful we were really lucky with all the the crossings that we had to do we managed to time it with the tides and the rain and everything else so that we weren't wading through you know ridiculously deep water so yeah we were just super stoked and then on the last day our daughter came and met us uh, for as a surprise in the last hut and uh, I was just so excited to see her. I just started bursting out crying and because uh, we were actually going to double hut and miss that one. So, <laughs> so it was lucky we went in. And um, so that was really nice. So that was our last ever hut experience for, the, for that trip and that was her first ever hut experience So and her husband. So that was really excited. They spent a lot of money on equipment and without talking to me and they you know realized that they should have talked to me <laughs> so they were very cold um that night but yeah that was it was super excited and then um my son-in-law made Biberman track medals for us and they the so once we got to the terminus in albany they they presented us with our medals so yeah it was very exciting a very emotional ending yeah it was great and i guess the one of the you know surprise things about the track was just how many friends that we've made um because i guess spring is like peak hour on the trail doing the end to end so yeah we've made some definitely some lifelong hiking friends and uh yeah looking forward to catching up with them again so even though like we were in and out of each other's company because obviously we were hiking at different speeds and sometimes we'd go for a few days without seeing each other and catch, catch up again in the track towns you know, it was super exciting knowing that there was there was people looking out for you. There was people, you know, who knew what you were doing and why you were doing it and happy to celebrate the really good points and p- things that you could share, some of the, the the downsides as well. So, yeah, it was just a, um, a beautiful, beautiful journey for sure. Amazing, amazing. And, 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 and through all that, like, obviously you spent a long time on the trail. It was a big, big adventure. And I assume there were, you know, lots and lots and up and downs, you know, throughout. Mm. Like, you know, through that whole process, were there any sort of challenges, struggles, issues you faced or anything that maybe, you know, you hadn't really first considered when you first set off or before you set off? Yeah, the six days of walking through water. Um, <laughs> that was just... It was ridiculous. My husband um, it was so bad. My husband took a photo of me because uh, I was walking ahead and it's become a meme at my daughter's work about this is how bad it feels. <laughs> so, I mean, people had said that, yeah, there was, that section had water, but, yeah, no one had prepared me for that that idea of six days and um, and the impact that that has on uh, your body, and no matter how much you think you know your feet, you don't, um, and, and all your beats after six days um, because there was no opportunity for them to ever be dry. Um, your socks were just manky. I, everything stank to high heavens uh, because, you know, you're walking through swamps and everything. Um, and, the, like I say, I ended up with uh, almost like a PTSD every, 
um, and I wasn't the only one. Um, everyone was like, okay, so how can we avoid puddles in the future? And um, so it was, yeah, it was intense. It was very intense. And I think if you had orthotics, because um, I had some inserts in my shoes as well, so I have, was having to take that, those out of my boots um, to walk so I didn't damage them. So I had a, luckily I'd, I had actually brought a sp- spare insoles for my boots and put those in that without the inset so my feet got extremely sore um uh yeah and like other people with orthotics were having a similar experience of that of of foot pain um and just a sheer mental exhaustion of having to concentrate so hard for so long you know because we couldn't actually see the trail and so and you know there's rots everywhere obviously which you can't see so you're constantly having to use your pole as a you know depth gauge so you didn't suddenly you know fall in because there was one lady who was ahead of us she'd fallen in quite badly and obviously with a heavy pack she thought she was going to drown so um yeah she thought that you know basically the earth was swallowing her up so that was yeah something that um that was that sheer mental exhaustion um it was um very hard to hard to to deal with especially you know and you just get tired and you 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 know you start to fall over um I fell over twice in that section like so that lady she killed over um yeah it was just exhausted and we met one gentleman who he was mentally exhausted and he'd came came across a puddle and he just waded all the way through it. Oh, it was very deep, even though there were, and he was so stressed out that um, he didn't even see the si- the signs, that were huge signs that were written in the sand, you know, um, diversion this way. And um, just, he just, yeah, he was just so stressed out. So you've got to try and maintain this uh, calm, um, and mental look after your mental health when you're being so stressed so continuously um, because you do miss opportunities if you're so tired that you can't see them in front of your face um, and the, and you can't you can't um, blind yourself to opportunities either because again because you're tired or the person who's passed you said oh there was no way around um, the weed left a, a big note in the sand for the people who are behind us saying, oh, you know, yeah, there's a, di- a diversion uh, for this particular puddle. And, um, yeah, they, would, they had just seen the puddle, um, hurt, come across the really stressed out guy and didn't see our, our you know, our notes in the sand. So, uh, you know, your mental state and levels of exhaustion really do affect the decisions that you make. Uh, and potentially put you in a in a quite dangerous situations that you don't necessarily need to be in. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 on that point, you know, was there was there any sort of particular, I guess, tricks or strategies or, or tactics that you use to sort of keep your mental state, you know, where it needs to be, or, or you know, um, reduce that fatigue and exhaustion, you know, through such a obviously stressful period and tough period was there anything you sort of fell back on there um oh my goodness uh what I did was is I tried to see some of the beautiful things uh and appreciate those when they did occur you know like oh you suddenly found a beautiful flower or something um uh taking the time to have a rest even though you might have 25 k's to go and you know you're going two kilometers an hour because this, the swamp is so bad. Um, take the time to rest. Have that cup of tea, or have that you know packet of soup or whatever, because you'll feel so much better afterwards, and uh, you'll be able to get through no matter what the weather throws at you. You know we stopped to have, we, we were absolutely freezing at one point, and uh, we we stopped got. Um, and our gear had fat all our wet weather gear had failed. It was just abysmal. So we stopped, we stopped, got changed, had a hot drink, felt a lot better, warmed our body body up again, got back on the trail, and um, we were happy. We were chatting and um, laughing away. 
And then the, the temperature plummeted straight afterwards and started hailing. And um, But we were still able to keep going. We didn't make any bad decisions. We kept control of the, the hills. We didn't get lost um, because we'd taken the opportunity to have that, that mental break and snap out of it, you know, because you can, if you can just keep going, 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 you can sink into this morass and not realise that next thing you know you're lost, you've missed the, the turn-off point, uh, you know, that kind of thing, or you've gone the completely wrong direction. We met one guy who'd gone completely the opposite direction and, um, yeah, he hadn't realised until he'd done five kilometres for no reason. <laughs> And he suddenly realized, oh, I've seen this before. You know, after five kilometers, he recognized it. So, yeah, you really, you know, you can really sink without knowing it. So, yeah. yeah have a absolutely. break. <laughs> uh, and have, yeah. have, a, have, have something yummy to, to eat along the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. So one, uh, one other thing I wanted to dive into, you know, a little bit, like, is sort of how things have gone for you after the trail because obviously this has been a massive adventure you know have gone through so many struggles you know work through this thing that you've been leading to for quite a while and it's been a long-term plan of yours now that it's all over you know once you've been off the trail like how how, how things have been going for you you know what's been going through your head and, and how's it been adapting back to to, to normal life um i would say it's been a, a serious challenge uh, coming back to normality because um, we were on the trail for so long. Um, uh, so we've been off trail now for three weeks and I think my stomach is only just coming to terms with that. So I've really struggled with eating food because we've had a lot of, um, you know, family things on, you know, everyone wanted to catch up. So there's a lot of party food and it's made me just feel really nauseous compared to you know the very simple diet that we were on on trail on the on the trail we were eating you know just you know a lot of um buckwheat and rice and and dehydrated beans and in jerky which is very very lean um so very lean diet and um just eating that rich food was just horrible um and the sheer amount of food you need to adjust to so obviously you're not hiking so much every day. So how much do you eat? And then so my husband went, he went the opposite way. He just stopped eating because um, he was obsessed about putting on weight. Um, so, we, yeah, we're slowly, we're slowly getting back into it, I think, you know, um, and eating normally. And I think one of the things that helps to manage as well is, um, you know, is in terms of proportion sizes. Do you need eat too much, too little? So we we've definitely gone back to um, what we were doing on the trail, which was measure everything out. Um, you know, so have you know having the half a cup of muesli or you know the, a cup of rice or whatever it is, just measure it out um, so that we're not under eating and we're not over eating, um, and just keeping it really simple. So that's something we've done. Um, to help our sleep has just been all over the shop um, because obviously we've got electricity now. So, <laughs> um, and again, you know, seeing people, friends and family after, after work. So that's, um, yeah, electricity has been a serious challenge um, because it's so artificial and just that, yeah, it's just, you know, when you're used to going to bed at, you know, 7 o'clock or 7.30 and being asleep by 8 and then up at dawn, you know, um, just just miss dawn a lot. Um, the waking up, because I'm still waking up at dawn uh, here in Perth, so that's about quarter to five. I'm still waking up at quarter to five. But the sheer lack of birds um, and the lack of waves because we were, you know, like by the ocean for the last two weeks, you know, listening to traffic and airplanes and trains and uh, and people, it's just horrible. So, <laughs> um, yeah, that that that's still a challenge. But yeah, getting into it slowly. And um, I think the last two days, I think I've started to feel more relaxed. Um, the first two weeks, we just kept falling asleep all over the shop. So um, that was definitely something you need to take in. People had said to us before we left that you need to allow yourselves two weeks to a month to adjust back. And I was like, yeah, okay. 
but I didn't realise just how important that was as part of the planning to plan to, it's a, you know, plan time to fall asleep in the middle of the day, you know, um, and eventually I managed to stay awake all day. That was pretty good. That was a good feeling. Um, so that, was, that took a while. But, yeah, no, it's um, just your body's got to cope with um, and rejuvenate itself. It's got to refresh uh, itself. So and part of the strategies for that part from allowing yourself time to have a nap was we sat in the spa uh, a fair bit um, to try and keep our muscles loose planned uh, quite a few massages so we had about two or three massages in the first week we came back and um let me think what else oh yeah and I had I had one last week as well so yeah just um yeah look after yourself hot water bottles you know um yeah it's your body's you want your body to be able to do it again because we're, we're hoping to do it again next year and um yeah so my body's yeah, I want my body to still be strong and I don't want to lose the fitness that I gained. You know, uh, my body was amazing. It was a freaking machine. Uh, I'm full of muscle and um, I want to maintain that and keep that going and celebrate that achievement some more. So, yeah. Absolutely. And, and um, and like, you know, we're coming, coming relatively close to, to the end of this episode mm-hmm. today. I guess if there was... If there was anyone listening today who was sort of considering, you know, this specific adventure like the bib track or, or maybe, you know, considering another sort of, you know, long distance, you know, multi-month hike, like what what advice could you give them, you know, having been gone through something like this? Oh, my goodness, the advice. Train. <laughs> train and train and train some more. <laughs> um, get, you know, like with the program, the all the information that was so specific and relevant to hiking, uh, do the program, my goodness. There is just absolute wealth of information uh, and, you know, that you will use every single day of that trip. Um, I said, it certainly for me was a lifesaver and I had that training in my head every day. And I think I even posted uh, quite on quite a few different posts um that I was using the training and yeah it was absolute lifesaver so train 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 some more and um get that mental physical prep done and make the most of the nutritional information because when when we did the hike um we I had read that most people lose between five and twenty kilos but when they do the end-to-end and I'm a very slight person and I did not want to lose any weight at all. So um, had the nutrition absolutely bang on. So I only ended up losing about two kilos. So I know I definitely had a distribution of my body and built on a lot of muscle um, during the hike. But, yeah, make the most of the, at the training, get the support and information that you, um, that you can get, which is completely, absolutely relevant to you. Um, yeah, and I don't think any any. I, I know I had spoken to other people who'd gone to see nutritionists and done training that wasn't specific to hiking. Yeah, and they didn't find it relevant at all. So yeah, this is a fantastic program, and uh, yeah, absolutely one hundred percent do the program. <laughs> how good <laughs> well I, I i like the sound of that there we go <laughs> but, um, well well yeah well i think thank you thank you so much for coming on today helen and sharing all of this because you know it's been it's been so interesting just hearing a little bit more about you know the journey you've been through and you know it's such an awesome awesome hike and adventure you've gone through and i, I bet i could grill you for hours and hours and hours <laughs> on this and still hear more and more and more yeah, but sure. um but but either way you know it's been really interesting hearing a little bit about it i really appreciate you sharing all this because i know you know there will be a lot of our hikers out there listening who you know 
know, maybe are in, you know, uh, leading into a big adventure like this. Maybe they are feeling feeling a bit overwhelmed. Maybe they are sort of wanting to do the bib track or or maybe they are struggling, you know, after coming back from an adventure with a few things and, and just be able to know that, you know, they're not alone, that there's other yeah. people who go through this and it is a similar thing. So so I really do appreciate you coming on board and it's been absolutely awesome, you know, having a chat through this. So, so thank you so much. And I think it's been an, an awesome, awesome episode. Oh, thank you. Look, I really appreciated it. And a uh, big shout out to the Facebook group who go in live um, and uh, just for their support as well. It's just been fantastic. Um, yeah, I just love the opportunity. And uh, so it's been a privilege to talk to you and give back to back to you and your business. So thank you. So there we go, guys. I really do hope you've enjoyed today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed hearing a little bit about Helen's story, and I really do hope you've gotten some value out of all of it. Now, if you were in a similar position to Helen, you know, if you were stepping into leading into a big multi-week, multi-month hike, if you were on a bit of a shorter time period leading into adventure and you were feeling a bit overwhelmed, or you just had a big hike coming up, which you wanted to be 100% physically and mentally prepared for. You know, if you fall into any of those situations, you know, I would absolutely love to help you. Now, this week, if you haven't heard already, I am doing a promotion for my signature program, which is the online summit program, the same program that Helen has gone through. Now, inside this program, we'll teach you the strategies, the tips, the tactics that will help you get ready, get 100% fit, strong, and resilient for this adventure that you can use before, during, and after whatever hike you may have coming up. Now, if this sounds like something you might be interested in, you want to learn a little bit more about it, just flick me an email to rowan at summitstrength.com.au with the words, tell me more. Now, from there, we can organize a time to have a bit of a chat and really dive in and see if and how this program may be a good fit for your goals and your situation. So if you want to find out a little bit more, shoot me an email to rowan at summitstrength.com.au. I'll leave that email address in the show notes below with the words, tell me more, and we can take it from there. So thank you so much for listening today. I hope you've enjoyed it, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.